The Mega Man Zero series is what happens when a butthurt old man decides to wipe out 60% of humanity because he wasn't allowed to destroy all the Reploids. At least, that's how the story goes. Mega Man Zero 2 was released on May 2nd, 2003 for the Game Boy Advance. It was later released for the DS in June 2010 as the Zero Collection, and on the Wii U Virtual Console in January 2015, and on all modern hardware in February 2020 as the Legacy Collection. The game received mostly positive reviews, with little reviews going under a 7 out of 10. However, many reviewers argued this game's intense difficulty and how the game didn't add much to the previous game. Atomic Wedgie and squeezes the real X- <coughs> Voice crack, oh shit. Over a year has passed since the defeat of Copy X, and Zero has been mindlessly beating ass ever since. In fact, so much ass has been torn that Zero has grown tired of it and collapses in the middle of the desert. Harpuya, the new leader of Neo Arcadia after the death of Copy X, stumbles across Zero and probably brings him back to the Resistance base. I'm not even sure what the relationship between these two are at this point. You'll see why later. Zero is repaired and is brought up to speed. In the past year, CL and the gang have a new base for the Resistance, called the New Resistance Base. Wow, do these people just have no originality when it comes to naming things? CL states that the leader of the Resistance Base is known as El Pizzo, who looks way too much like an antagonist and way too much like a woman. More on that later. CL shows Zero the baby elf, something that could one day help her achieve her goal of finding a new energy source. With this energy source, all of this fighting would end. One day, El Pizzo and his crew decide to attack Neo Arca- Neo- N Fuck, I still can't say that. One day, El Pizzo and his crew decide to attack Neo Arcadia. As Zero was ripping and tearing the asses of anyone in his path on a separate mission, El Pizzo slips on a banana peel and alerts the remaining guardians of Neo Arcadia who promptly lined up all of El Pizzo's squad and fucks them all to death. Hope you brought some condoms. Zero goes to Neo Arcadia to rescue El Pizzo, and he tells Zero that because of his dumbass, Neo Arcadia has launched a fucking nuke towards the resistance base. Thankfully, Zero and CL stop it from hitting the base, and they redirect it to some village or something, I don't know. But hurt, El Pizzo goes back to Neo Arcadia, but this time, he wants to not only stop Neo Arcadia, but destroy it and leave nothing left. But wait, there are humans there. So Zero infiltrates Neo Arcadia, again. But first, he has to fight what's left of the four guardians from the last game, except old shithead because he died in the last game. Harpuya, however, does not wish to fight Zero, but El Pizzo forces him to, and after Harpuya's defeat, he pleads with Zero to put an end to El Pizzo. Zero gets to El Pizzo and watches as he gives the real X an atomic wedgie and squeezes the real X's balls as hard as he can. Zero defeats El Pizzo, but is saved by the Dark Elf, an incredibly powerful being that is the cause of this fighting and war. Remember that butt-hurt old man from the start of this video? Well, you'll see him real soon. Atomic Wedgie and squeezes the real ex- <coughs> Voice crack, oh shit. Alright, so as I write this script, I just got done playing Mega Man Zero 2 for the second time. And man, this is lame. Like I said in the last video, which you should go watch when you're done with this by the way, the controls aren't great on the original hardware, but that's mainly on Nintendo's end for only putting two fucking face buttons on the Game Boy Advance, and the Legacy Collection does a good job of fixing those issues. The controls in this game function exactly like Zero One, there's no difference between the two. Now as for the difficulty, holy shit. In the last video, I talked about how Zero One was a challenge, but there were only a few parts that pissed me off. This game, however, was agony from start to finish, the worst level was pretty hard to decide, but I think it has to be Phoenix Magneon. Fuck this guy. Phoenix Magneon is the hidden phantom of Zero Two. Like, Hidden Phantom probably thinks his dong is a hidden phantom because he can't even see it, man. It's so small. In his boss fight, most of the time you're in these tight situations where you just have to take the attacks right up the ass, and they do a ton of damage. In fact, there's a lot of sections where the game just shoves bullshit in your mouth. When you lose in any video game, it's supposed to feel like it's your fault. You lost because you suck. In Zero Two, sure, a good bit of the deaths do feel like it's your fault, but another good bit of them just feels like Capcom is personally bending you over and fucking you over. The weapons are pretty alright. Of course, you have the Z-Saber and Buster Shot, both of which you started the game with. You also get the Chain Rod and the Shield Boomerang. Oh boy, what fun. Everyone loves the Shield Boomerang. 
Thankfully, the amount you need to grind to level up these weapons is pretty much halved from the previous games, but the chain rod just feels like the triple rod from the last game, and the shield boomerang is just the same shitty weapon from the last game. Okay, enough bitching, let's talk about what's good from this game. This game introduces forms, which can provide bonuses for Zero at the cost of some other stats. For example, the defense form increases defense but halves your attack power, which is pretty interesting. There are quite a few of them, and they all unlock under certain conditions. The stage select screen now resembles the other Mega Man games instead of a boring ass list like from the first game. The mission progression is also a step up from the last one. In Zero One, it just felt like a huge pile of missions, because it was. I also just feel like Zero Two's stage select menu feels nicer as well. The music and sprites are also pretty good. I would say they're on par with the last game. The story is also quite superb. The antagonist has a cool backstory, motivation, and whatnot, and in my opinion, is better than Copy X from Zero One. Uh, yeah, that's all the nice things I have to say about this game. Back to bitching. Fuck these bosses. Especially the last few armed phenomenon ones. I want to strangle these pieces of shit. How do you even hit him? You have to make the most perfectly timed shot to even hit him, because he keeps hiding behind his machine thing like a pussy. Mega Man Zero Two didn't really add much upon the last game, besides a proper level select. The game was really tough, even for a Mega Man game. Even with the Cyber Elves, you have to know exactly what you're doing if you want to get anywhere in this game. So far, Mega Man Zero Two is the worst in the series. But we've only reviewed the first two. We still have two more to go, so stay tuned for those. Atomic Wedgie and squeezes the real X- <coughs> Voice crack, oh shit. Mega Man Zero Two is the only Zero game to show the entirety of the real X. Not Copy X, not X's spirit thing, but the real deal. Mega Man Zero Two is the final game in the series to feature the weapon level up system, thank god. The pause menu during the opening stage will be the same as the one from the first game, except it will show visible damage since Zero has taken some damage himself in between the two games. It will appear new and repaired everywhere else though. Mega Man Zero Two is the only Zero game to feature different forms. Atomic Wedgie and squeezes the real X- <coughs> Voice crack, oh shit. Mega Man Zero Two felt like Zero One, but worse. It was super difficult, almost too difficult. The music, graphics, and story were all very well made though. But that's about it. It wasn't all too fun in my opinion. So, what is the best part about Mega Man Zero Two? The stage select.